So whenever I'm ready. All right. Um, this is my story. Um, I guess I'll start at the beginning, like all stories go, I guess. Um, instead of being Jewish like my mother, you know, I was born, you know, I was born Jewish mother, Catholic father. But uh, my father insisted that I grow up Catholic. My mother reluctantly accepted this because she was a, the woman and she wasn't the head of the household. She knew my dad was a proud Catholic. And uh, so this meant that a circumcision was, op uh, was optional. Um, no need to have a rabbi there or whatever, you know, to slice off that extra vital piece of skin at the end of my penis. Looking back, growing up a Jew would have been easier. Uh, either easier or better. Uh, the only bad part was, now that I think about it, is uh, the fact that a rabbi would have sliced off my penis, or a piece of it, and sucked up the blood, giving me infant genital herpes or something. Uh, you know, I was a normal little boy who kept his foreskin intact. Something I regretted later in life, but nothing I would do anything about. As all young Catholics, I was a baby when I was baptized. I was less than one year old. It was shortly after my birth. And something I regret now. Uh, I still have pictures of my baptism. Father McMaster uh, delicately, delicately applied some holy water, like a sprinkle on my body. And then I was one with the Holy Spirit, according to the doctrine, right? According to my parents' plan, I was having... You know, you know, it was my parents' plan. There was nothing I could really do about it or say about it. I didn't have a choice in it, but it's just water, right? So I, I lived a normal uh, childhood up until the age of three, as far as I can remember. And things got a little complicated. Uh, I was only a child, and I learned to speak at age two and write by the age of four. And all this time, we attended Mass each Sunday and sometimes on Wednesdays, uh, you could say my indoctrination was going pretty well. I thought everything about God. I thought the world of him. I thought that there was no other way. There was no option at that age. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just wanted to please my parents and please the priest in any way possible. And uh, Father McMaster was a very kind man. And by the age of six, I, he was asked, he asked me to become an altar boy. I was scared at first because my parents, you know, well, I was scared at first, but my parents insisted that everything would be all right. By the age of seven, I had met all the nuns in the congregation. I knew them pretty well. I had candles and frankincense and all that stuff and all that jazz, you know. And then, you know, I went along with the Catholic Church. I was a good boy. I was a really good boy. And uh, I did this and, and began to find myself feeling important. And uh, so this goes on and on. And so at age eight, Father McMaster, he was probably in his early 40s. I had no idea what was in store. I had no idea. I recall this one time I was asked to clean up the, help clean up the church after the Mass. My parents left me with the promise that they would be back in a few hours to get me. You know, I still remember putting away the candles and the wine and those little unleavened biscuits that they give for communion and things like that. Uh, Father McMaster was so proud of me and he said that I was a good lad in his Scottish accent, you know, you're a good lad. And uh, so he said one day he, he hoped that I would join the priesthood like him. And uh, I guess you could say I trusted him and and all that, but, you know, that would be cool if I became a priest, you know, so to speak, cool, so to speak. Uh, things went like this for the next few years. By the age of 12, I was the third oldest altar boy. I helped uh, the other ones guide the young boys, the younger boys, uh, the way I, was, I had been trained. At the age of 12, when I was more mature, McMaster said he had a present to give me. I was kind of curious, right, because he'd never given me a present before. Uh, it was a Game Boy with a you know, Tetris game. I was, you know, I was thrilled. A few weeks later, he called upon me to help as usual, and the priest said it was time to learn some important lessons about growing up. He said all the boys should learn a valuable lesson at the age of 13. 
So alone in his chambers, he began telling me that we had a trust. And that what he had to say was in confidence and that no one should know. And he was a man of God after all. He hugged me and patted me on my head like I was a good little boy. Even though I was getting bigger, you know, I was almost five feet tall. Or something like that, I don't know how tall I was. He asked me how I was developing down there. And, uh, and things got a little complicated. He started, uh, well, after a few meetings he would un undo my, undo his robe. He'd start touching my, my, my ass and uh, my butt, I guess. Underneath his robe, though, he was naked and obviously aroused. And looking back on it, you know, it was very shocking. I was almost crying. Um, he said that it was time to understand what being a man was all about and, and what was expected of me. He started fondling me through my pants, and I didn't really know what was going on, but it felt... I didn't know what was going on, but it felt so wrong. He assured me that every boy must learn about these things. He gave me uh, a $10 bill, which was more than my $2 a week allowance at the time. $2 at the time was a pretty decent allowance for, for a guy my age, a kid my age. After a few times, he started pulling down my pants. I always resisted, and I begged him to stop, but it never stopped. He would start in inserting his finger into my anus and licking my penis. so dirty and ashamed. I never told a soul. I continued as an altar boy and asked him to stop again a few weeks later when it ultimately happened again. He said that if I told, he would start hurting the younger boys and doing the same thing to them. So what i do is I'd close my eyes and I'd play along. I didn't want the other boys to be hurt like I was hurting. At 14 and a half, um, McMaster raped me. I cried so hard, but I never told a soul. I took it. I felt as though I were in hell. I was in hell, you know, like I... There was no... I was trapped. I, I didn't know what to do. And the rape thing happened about once a month on average for the next year or so. And, uh... The guilt and shame was eating away at me. McMaster always acted as if nothing happened. My parents loved him. I couldn't tell anyone. At uh, 15, I tried to take my own life. Uh, I took too many of my mom's, well, a whole bottle of my mom's antidepressants. I don't know what they were, but I thought that would do the trick, but I guess I was wrong. Anyway, after a few days unconscious, I woke to find the priest and my parents hovering above me. They said God was watching the folks for me. And, uh, I guess I recovered. And, uh, I never went back to the church, though. I, uh, I always wondered if he was hurting the other boys, but I could never go back, and I could never tell anyone. My parents continued going to church, but I refused to go. I started running away. And, uh, I started imitating the priest's actions with, uh, a boy my age. Uh, that happened a few times, and then I joined, uh, what was known to me as a gang, but it was just a group of kids, really. We weren't really up to no, we weren't really up to bad things. We were just a couple little jerks, really. We were just being assholes to old people and beating up little kids. Not little kids, but kids are a little bit younger than us. So after a few run-ins with the law like that, I decided to behave again. I knew I was on a troubled path. I, uh, I'm glad I never did drugs uh, with my, like my friends did. I ended up graduating with honors from my high school, and uh, I always carried a pain in my heart, a sinking feeling in my chest. I wasn't gay or anything, but I was definitely confused about sexuality and all the confusion caused by the priest. I, I just didn't know what to do. Um, and I never spoke, spoken about these things before. Um, I'm older now. I'm married with a daughter, Emily. My wife. She's awesome. Uh, she's my pride and joy. I decided to raise Emily outside the church. In fact, after much searching, I, I no longer believed in God, but my, my wife still does.
Anyways, that's my quick story. I never did confront, confront the priest. I never spoke out till now. Well, till recently. I felt guilt that I had, hadn't told anyone about Father McMaster. Because he had likely done the same thing to other boys. And, and in fact, I know he did. And I did file a complaint recently, like I just said. Uh, to make a long story short, he was caught in the act by a younger, more honest priest. Or so the rumor goes. So that's the story of the priest who touched me. And uh, I always wonder what happened to him. Where he is now. Is he in jail? You know. And, uh, if I believed in God, I'd, I'd be praying for all those boys that he touched. And to this day, I still feel great shame. Uh, but I'm a happy person now. That's my story. Thanks.